Hello everyone, this video is about chapter 4, biocatalysis, subtopic 4.1, properties of enzyme and mechanism of enzyme action. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to state the properties of enzyme, state the stick classes of enzyme according to International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology IUBMB classification and state the factors that affect the enzymatic reaction. State the properties of enzyme. What is an enzyme? An enzyme refers to a biological catalyst that are capable of speeding up the rate of biological reaction by lowering the activation energy and remain unchanged at the end of the reaction. So meaning that an enzyme works in a living organism by speeding up the rate of biological reaction and they, low, and they lower the activation energy and remain unchanged at the end of the reaction so that the enzyme can be used for the next reaction. This is the structure of an enzyme. So an enzyme consists of an active site, uh, which is the site of substrate binding, and an allosteric site, which is the site for inhibitor binding. What is an activation energy? Activation energy, or EA, refers to the minimum energy needed to cause a chemical reaction so that the reactant able to reach the transition state before products are formed. So we can see from this graph here, we have the reactant that needs to absorb the free energy in order to reach the transition state. So the minimum energy needed to be absorbed by the reactant to reach the transition state is known as the activation energy. So at the transition state, the bond will break and new bonds will form releasing energy to the surrounding and then at the end the products will be formed. So this graph shows the activation energy with and without enzyme. So the, the blue line here refers to the activation energy without enzyme and the red line here refers to the activation energy with enzyme. So we can see that the activation energy is lowered when an enzyme is added in the reaction. So what is the transition state? The transition state along the reaction is the point of maximum free energy where bond breaking and bond making are balanced. So during the transition state, new bonds are formed and old bonds are broken in order to form the product. So there are six, sorry, there are eight properties of enzyme. The first one is all enzymes are globular protein. They function by lowering the activation energy and they are highly specific in action, meaning that all enzyme, meaning specific enzyme only work for specific substrate. They are not altered at the end of the reaction and they can be reused. They are required only in small amount to catalyze the reaction. The reaction is extremely efficient. They may catalyze a reversible reaction and the enzyme can be, dena can be denatured by extreme pH or high temperature because the bonds in the enzyme has been broken. State the six classes of enzyme according to Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Bio Biology IUBMB classification. So these are the six classes of enzyme. So the classes of enzyme must end with ACEs. So we have oxidoreductases, transferases, hydrolases, lyases, isomerases and ligases. Oxidoreductases are a group of enzymes that catalyze the redox reaction by transferring hydrogen, oxygen or electrons from one molecule to another. Examples of enzymes under group oxidoreductases are glucose oxidase, malate dehydrogenase and ADH dehydrogenase 
or dehydrogenase. Example of reaction catalyzed by oxidoreductases is when glucose added with oxygen catalyzed by glucose oxidase forming gluconic acid and water. The second class of enzymes is called hydrolases. Hydrolases catalyze the hydrolysis of substrate or breakdown of substrate by the addition of water. Examples of hydrolases are lipase, amylase, sucrose and peptidase. Example of reaction catalyzed by hydrolases is when sucrose added with water catalyzed by sucrase will form glucose and fructose. The third one is transferases. Transferases catalyze the transfer of functional group of atoms from one molecule to another. Example of transferases are glycogen phosphorylase, hexokinase, phosphotransferase, and transaminase. Example of reaction is when glycogen added with inorganic phosphate catalyzed by gly glycogen phosphorylase forming glucose 1-phosphate. The next one is isomerases. In isomerases, they catalyze the rearrangement of atoms within a molecule by converting one isomer to another or also known as isomerization. So, example of isomerases is phosphoglucoisomerase. Example of reaction is when glucose 6-phosphate, which is a 6-carbon sugar, catalyzed by phosphoglucoisomerase, converted into fructose 6-phosphate, which is also a 6-carbon sugar. So, glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate are isomerase. The next one is lyases. So, lyases catalyzes the breaking of chemical bonds without the addition of water or group elimination to form double bond. Example of lyases is pyruvate decarboxylase or the groups of decarboxylase. Pyruvate catalyzed by pyruvate decarboxylase forming ethanol and carbon dioxide. Ligases catalyze reaction in which new chemical bonds are formed and use ATP as energy source. Example of ligases is amino acid, tRNA synthase, and DNA ligase. Example of reaction is when amino acid added with tRNA catalyzed by amino acid tRNA synthase with the help of the ATP to provide energy forming amino acid tRNA complex. So those are the six classes of enzyme. The next learning outcome is to state the factors that affect the enzymatic reaction. To obtain the optimal condition, enzymes are affected by pH, temperature, substrate concentration, and cofactor. So for pH and temperature, each enzyme would have their optimum pH and temperature. For substrate concentration, if the substrate concentration is higher than the enzyme concentration, then the rate of the reaction will be lowered. We will take a look at cofactor in the next slide. Subtopic 4.2 cofactor and subtopic 4.3 inhibitor at the end of the lesson students should be able to define cofactor and define inhibitor define the cofactor what is a cofactor so cofactor is any non-protein molecule or ion that is required for the proper functioning of an enzyme so this is an example of a cofactor. So we have an enzyme which is an inactive enzyme called as apo enzyme. So apo enzyme is an inactive enzyme and they cannot receive any substrate. 
So the apo enzyme will combine with the cofactor forming a holo enzyme. So holo enzyme is an active enzyme and they are ready to receive a substrate. There are three types of cofactors which are metal ions, coenzymes and prosthetic groups. Define inhibitor. Inhibitor refers to a substance that slow down or stop enzyme control reaction. There are two types of inhibitors which are competitive inhibitors and non-competitive inhibitors. So for competitive inhibitors, they will, uh, they will compete for the same active site. So the substrate, which is uh, indicated as S here, and the inhibitor, indicated by the letter I here, will compete with each other for the active site of the enzyme. So if the substrate binds first to the active site, the substrate will be converted into product. But if the inhibitor binds first to the active site, the substrate cannot bind to the active site, so the product cannot be formed. This is the non-competitive inhibitor. So for non-competitive inhibitor, the inhibitor will bind to the allosteric site. If the inhibitor binds first to the allosteric site, it will change the shape of the active site, making the substrate cannot bind to the active site. So no product will be formed. But if the substrate binds first to the active site, this will change the shape of the allosteric site so that the inhibitor cannot bind to the allosteric site and the product will be formed. Thank you. So, see you in the next video.